This is now preheated. We have the controls here for fine tuning the temperature. It defaulted to the 171 was the last preset. And we have it to PLA, which I will be trying first. This button here controls my speed, which I'm just gonna leave it at the lowest speed at this point. This here is my moving the filament forward and this would back it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try loading my first filament now. Okay. So I'm gonna cut a clean end on this before loading it, obviously. Uh, now, just a note, this does go into, I guess, a power safe mode here. Once you leave it for 90 seconds or more, all you have to do to reheat it is just press the feed button and it's going to start heating right back up to where it was. We are back up to temperature. Actually, it exceeded the temperature here and then is going back down. We need to insert the filament into the feeder hole and press the feed filament button. So this is a very, very slow sounding feed, but I do have it on the slowest speed. Let's actually try kicking that speed up a little bit. Again, it's this button here. Okay, so we're gonna go up to speed four here and let's just try feeding it a little bit faster. So you can see it's a, it's a fine feed. It's actually a pretty good speed, I suppose. It doesn't really want to disconnect. I'm gonna try see what it's like on uh, the fastest speed. It has six speeds, so let's just see how fast it can feed. And then at the slowest speed, this is speed one. Let's see how it compares. is quite slow. It does give you the opportunity to create a fatter line. All right, so I'm satisfied that it does work. So I want to try semi-flex. I need to change the filament now, so I'm going to back it out. Should be this button here. And sure enough, hey, that's actually quite decent. Hey, I'm impressed. That wasn't bad at all. All right, nice and clean, ready to try the next filament. When you're in the PLA setting, it will only allow you to go up to 200 Celsius. So what we need to do to be able to try it with the semi-flex, we need to hold both of these buttons down here, just press them both, and that switches us over to ABS, which is defaulting to 230, which is about right because for semi-flex, you'll see here we've got, um, their printing guide says 225 to 235. That seems just about reasonable and to try it at 230. It heats very rapidly. I'm impressed with you know how fast it heats up for this. So let's go ahead and switch over. Okay. So, I mean, obviously I've got it in the right diameter. So the question is, can the extruder inside of the pen extrude this flexible filament? Uh, I chose this particular pen one, partly because it says it does have like a flexible PLA type of filament you can purchase. I mean, that doesn't mean it's gonna work with this, but I need to know. So let's, oops, we power it out. So let me just press that. Okay, so we're at 225, give it a second. Okay, let's see how this works. So we're just going to insert it, feed down. So far it's grabbing it just fine. I can feel it feeding through, no problems. To make sure it has enough slack. I also want to know if I can use this to join pieces together. So we'll be trying that in a moment also. So I've got the remainder of the red PLA coming out here. Okay, this is fantastic. So it is feeding the semi-flex with no problem. I mean, obviously you're not gonna be wanting to draw in the air with this, but I'm not interested in that application. I think it's actually a tiny bit too hot because it is coming out of the tip when I'm not pressing the button. So I'm going to cool it down just a little bit. So let's see if it sticks to this piece. Now this is actually the Ninja Flex, but it shouldn't really affect the test as to which Ninja Tech product it is here. 
So we're just going to draw on. I'm just gonna draw, you know, another squiggle because at this point I just want to know if it sticks. Okay, so now the moment of truth, did it stick? Uh, and it stuck on the thicker part, not so much on the thinner part. That lets me know that in order to have my added details stick to the print, I need to actually do a thicker bead, allow it to have enough, uh, enough material that it's hot enough to melt into the piece that, is, that has already been printed. So I'm gonna try this again here. Let's say that I wanna draw perhaps uh, some rivet type pieces. It's a little bit annoying that it times out so fast, but it does heat up again so quickly that it's not particularly a concern for me. So we're gonna go nice and slow. I'm just gonna do a nice little blob there. And I believe that should stick, so we'll let it cool for a moment. In the meantime, I'm gonna just kind of draw some shapes here. Okay, we're getting a little bit of popping. So again, I still think that it's too hot. I'm not sure if that is indicating that the temperature gauge on here is off a little bit or just that this particular filament is wanting to be, wanting to be extruded cooler than the uh, manufacturer's instructions. These are sticking pretty well. Yeah, that's doable. That one, not so much. Let's try it on a different surface. This is armadillo. By the way, the button placement on this is perfect for me. I mean, I'm just holding it like this and my hand is naturally, naturally where the button is placed. So they did a good job in placing that, I would say. Although if you are left-handed, okay, yeah, the button placement is fine. If you're left-handed, you just be using your pointer instead of your thumb. Okay, I'm gonna switch back though because I'm much more comfortable with my right hand. I'm draw kind of a flower here. I'm gonna go pretty slowly so it has time to bond. Let's make it a butterfly because I don't feel like drawing another petal. It is a little bit of a problem how this continues to extrude uh, after I have stopped. This still may be a temperature setting concern that could be fixed. However, I'm concerned that if I turn it too cool, that it's going to have even more trouble bonding with the parent material. So let's see if this peels. No, this is, this is quite well bonded. So it could be that this particular surface, because it's not particularly smooth, is adding you know another variable in there. This piece is actually semi-flex, so it should be the appropriate material to test uh, semi-flex on. I'm just gonna draw some lines here. It takes a moment to start extruding. It's like you need to start shortly before and end shortly before also in order to have your extruding end appropriately. Okay, that's not too bad. Now let's see if these have bonded. Yep. Okay, so at the beginning it's not bonding. It's not quite as hot, but as the design gets going, then this part is properly bonded. So this could be used to add details to prints. You're just gonna have to work at it a little bit to get the proper technique for ensuring that it bonds to your piece and that you don't have too much excess to clean off later. Yep, so this is stuck on well. Um, I would say this is definitely a possibility. The next thing I wanna test is whether this can be used to join pieces together. So as a test piece, I have uh, one of the plates from my Witch King of Angmar gauntlet. So what's going to happen here is these portions are going to get heat molded to the right shape, but I've, uh, in the model, I've created these cutouts so that the points can be joined like that to create a nice sharp detail on the end here. What I need to do is glue these surfaces together. With Semiflex and NinjaFlex, I'm still having trouble finding any sort of adhesive that works with them. Um, definitely like a plastic welding type method does absolutely work, but I would like to know if the 3D printing pen can be used instead because it is um, neater, easier to work with, and heats up very fast. I would think that a nice hot temperature would give me the best possibility of this working for heat molding. So we're gonna kick this back up to, I'd say 225. 
which is still supposed to be at the low end um, for this filament, but it just seems like as I'm doing these tests that the, the filament's coming out a little bit too hot. I'm gonna try this side one first. Let's just pump this full of nice hot filament, squish it together, I'm gonna hold it there. All right, we're cool. See how well that bonded. Okay, so not too well, although I'm not sure it's completely cool. Let's kick the temperature up a little bit more and try again. I've got it set to 233, so it's hitting a range of like 232 to 234. Let's pump in some plastic and see if this will bunt. Here we go. Yes, that is nice and hot. I still have it on the slowest speed because I don't wanna overtax the extruder with this flex filament. I wanna give it a chance to grip. It's definitely still warm. I can feel it on the back here that it's quite hot. This is cool now. It's maybe a tiny bit warm, okay, but it's cool. So let's test to see if this plastic weld is going to hold. Okay, here we go. And I am able to pull that apart from this side. The other side though does seem to have bonded better. So let's do, let's do this. Let's just throw a little bit more in here, see if that fixes it. I'm also going to go ahead and try now actually increasing the speed so that we can pump out a little more filament and fill in the recess faster so we can close it up while the filament is still nice and hot. So let's go up to say speed four. That's still a little bit warm, so I'm gonna just go ahead and I'll just pump it in the new one here. All right, so speed four. You can hear that it's faster. It's definitely coming out faster. Okay. Now I'm still getting separation. So it doesn't seem like it works at the slower speed for a large area such as this. So we'll test this guy now. This is at the high speed and the temperature all the way up to 235C. and we still are getting some pulling away when we stress it to this point of fully flattening it out. You're just not gonna get as good of a bond, I guess, with pumping it on and sticking it together. We need that direct heat onto the parent piece to mix the two filaments together and ensure that they're fully bonded. But for maybe for small projects, you know, this could be an option if you're just trying to join two little things together. So let's see if we could do details on PVC with this. That actually bonded pretty well in the areas where it's thicker. Of course, these little stringy areas where it wasn't actually pointing towards the pipe, it was sort of piped out into the air and then set on the pipe. Those didn't stick so well. But for example, in this area, I would consider that relatively permanent. Um, it, it could be scraped off with a knife, obviously, but for the purposes of adding details to something out of PVC, I would say that is an option. Next material, let's see if the uh, pen works using Semiflex on just some nice Coroplast here because I might be using Coroplast for some armor for the Witch King and I want to know if it's an option to add some additional details using the pen. Let's find out how well these stuck. Okay, that one didn't stick at all. So with it suspended above the Coroplast, it didn't adhere at all. Well, neither did that one, okay. So the consensus is it doesn't stick to Coroplast. Interesting. However, in this portion, yeah, even where it melted through, it still didn't stick. So it's not an option for Coroplast. That's good to know. I'm gonna try the Semiflex on a pet G piece just to see what happens. All right, let's say I wanted to add just some little details onto this after I had already printed it. Let's try a leaf. Let's try another leaf. Okay, so it's a little bit challenging to control, but I believe it does have potential for adding organic details to your print you know, once it's already done. Obviously it's better if you can incorporate it into your actual 3D model, but in some cases this might be, you know, a simpler application. As to whether it sticks, no, not really. Let's see if this one did. No, okay. So it's not sticking to Pet G. All right, let's say I want to add some details to this. I'm gonna just sketch something in. Just kind of an outline even. Turning it down to 210 because I'm still getting excessive flow and a lot of popping and crackling and rough texture. Definitely rough, but possibly with practice. 
could be improved. Let me try one more. It's getting better with kicking the temperature down. You'll see where the temperature was more hot. It's a lot more uh, rough and bubbly, which could be an interesting effect. Um, over here where it's cooler, it is definitely smoother. So let's see if it bonded. This is semi-flex, so it should bond. And yeah, that definitely bonded. Let's see in this coolest corner. Mm. Okay, so where it's cooler, we have a little bit of lack of bonding. Let's try that one more time. Let me try with it the tip more directly pressed against the piece. I feel like I'm doing kind of like a tattoo or a graffiti type thing. While it's still hot, again, it is a little bit moldable. So that's kind of nice. One last project, I'm gonna add some details to the knuckles for the Witch King. Not so much that it's gonna be this way in the costume, but just to see what's possible for future projects. It's sort of interesting. So this is kind of like decorating a cake, if you've ever done that, with the squeezy bag of frosting. It seems like this really is going to take practice to develop the proper coordination and to keep your hand steady, have the proper motion rate to keep the stream as even as possible. But this would be definitely a more organic type detail adding. Anything that you want to be strictly geometric, it's best to build it into your design anyways. I'm done with my initial test, so now I'm going to unload the filament that I have in there, which is the semi-flex. So let's see how this works goes. We're going to just use this button here to back it out. Seems to be working just as well as it did for the PLA. No problems with this extruder on the semi-flex, which is exciting. And there it is. So I've been using this for a couple of hours, I guess, and I haven't had a single jam thus far. Um, I'm not having any issues with it whatsoever. The temperature control is really nice. I like being able to fine tune my temperature as opposed to only having a preset for type of filament, specifically because I want to be able to use other types of filaments than those that are specifically sold by the 3D Scribbler company. Conclusions from my initial testing here. Uh, it's all positive. I haven't run into any issues as of yet. Uh, the only concerns I have are um, with the filament getting too hot and boiling out and continuing to come out and also just coordination and fine-tuning the actual use of the tool but the tool itself didn't have any issues as of yet. That concludes the initial testing of the 3D Scribbler Pen version 3. I'll be doing more testing with this, uh, practicing different techniques for improving the product that can be created, and then also stay tuned because we'll be doing a, another update on the Witch King costume coming soon. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.